welcome back to Grease Garage. It might look complete guys, but there's a lot of little things to do to get this ready for startup. And that's what we're doing in this episode. Hope you come along for the ride and enjoy the episode. So as you can imagine, a very important thing on cars is cooling. And this car currently doesn't have any. So that's what I'm gonna focus on first. As you can see, we're missing a bit of the water housing because we gotta modify it a bit. And also we need to hook up wall lines to this turbo. It should be pretty straightforward, but I bet you it's not going to be because nothing on this car has been. So that's where I'm gonna start first. Let's see where it takes us. So when we were mocking up the intercooler piping, we noticed that the radiator hose is going to be extremely close to that throttle body and the silicon piping. And anything that we can do to stop rubbing and transfer of heat is a worthwhile effort. This is a simple mod and all we are going to do is remove that slight bend out of the housing and weld it up so it's at 90 degrees. But before we go and do any welding, we're going to cut off some water lines that we don't need anymore to clean up the build. With any cast aluminium, getting the metal as clean as possible is a no-brainer. And a couple of minutes on the wire wheel really gets a nice shine on this stuff. As always, I try to get into a comfortable position and I tack two sides of the section now welding so it doesn't move with heat. The last thing before I lay a bead is I'm going to do a pre-run over a section that I'm welding to remove any impurities out of the aluminium. And because this cast is pretty good, getting a good bead is not too much of a stretch. So welding this section was pretty easy. The finger sander is back, and I've said this before, but this is a great tool for under 70 bucks. How could you go wrong? My plan for this part is to make a little factory, so those welds need to go, and this makes a quick job of it. Now let's talk about making mistakes, because this is mine, thinking it was a good idea to weld the piece of metal onto the raised section of the housing where the water line was. And honestly, it looks like crap. A big, dirty cow turd on a brand new Mercedes, which goes to show you can't always get right the first time. And after all the work that we've done to this Pajero, being unsatisfied is not going to cut it. And that's exactly what I did. I cut the ugly off this and started again. This time, making it so the finish will be level with the rest of the housing. So after some more welding, grinding and sanding, this is the end product and now I am happy. So as you would have noticed, I didn't put any gasket or goo or anything like that on this. It's just that this is temporary for the moment because I'm probably going to take this back pipe off here to modify it for the water lines on the turbo. But what I want to do now is Josh's radiator that he has, which is aftermarket, has never really fit properly. So I'm going to modify that so it sits a bit better and hopefully gives us a bit more room as well because the way it was sitting was just jank. So. Let's go on to that one next. Okay, so let's give a backstory to Josh's radiator while I do some measuring. So my old mate needed a fully sick three core radiator in the Pajero, as it was getting a little warm during four wheel driving on a hot day. So when Josh saw this ad, he got super excited to find one so cheap on eBay and with a 98% positive feedback, from Mr. Benji over, I can see why he jumped at the chance to grab this. The only problem is, it didn't fit. Point B to point A was a B's private parts too short of fitting, so he could only bolt in one side. 
Now the problem with that is, next time Josh goes out on those dunes, I don't want a phone call saying, the radiator has decided it doesn't want to be in the 4B anymore. So because of that, I'm redoing the right side bracket. This will give us a little more clearance inside the engine bay. But just keep in mind that Josh has converted this 4B to thermofans. If your radiator fan is still mounted onto the water pump pulley, double check that your fan isn't going to hit the shroud if you need to do the same mod. After cutting off the old bracket, I find a piece of offcut of aluminium and I mark it to shape where I need to drill the holes. After double checking to make sure it's going to work, I set it up on the welding bench and put some tacks on it. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm welding it in that position. That's because this jank radiator was not only short and didn't fit, it was not even flush with the car. So by welding the new bracket behind where the old one was, it will correct this. And as you can see, I'm laying a super long bead to make sure this is as strong as possible. The only thing left to do is clean it up and put it back in. So now that the radiator is in and it is fixed really good, we fixed up that gap here, which is awesome. It's time to put a hose on. Now the standard hose is not gonna fit, especially seeing Josh has cut up to put this thing for his thermo fan and it is just hideous. So that's gone. And what I've got here is a lower magna radiator hose and look at this. Come like that, mm, not working about there. How good does that look? That has worked really, really well. Heaps of room now, so yeah. I'll give that a clean up and we'll get a new one for him, but that's pretty much what we'll use. That looks really, really good, really nice. And after cleaning up the pot and slapping on some new hose clamps, you really can see the difference between what it was to what it is. And now that that's done and the engine is looking semi-complete, I'm going to pull it all apart because I want to modify the rocket covers and the only way to get to them is by pulling everything off. So the reason why I want to modify them is because I want to put bigger breather ports on so we can go to a big catch cam for Josh and also I want to paint them up to make the engine bay look a little bit cleaner. If you want to see how I modify the rocket covers, go check out this video. The link will be in the description. Now let's focus on that oil. The most common place to get the oil feed for a naturally aspirated engine is right near the engine's oil filter. Normally there will be an oil pressure switch around this area. If not, you could get an aftermarket sandwich plate, like this one here, to get your oil feed from that. But I've decided to do something different. On the Pajero, Mitsubishi, in all their wisdom, decided to install an oil cooler on the factory engine. And guess what? Those leads lead straight underneath that turbo. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to get my feed from there. From the return side of that cooler, so it gets some nice cold oil into that turbo. My plan is to take this section out and go to the hydraulic store to get some m &F fittings. And if that doesn't work, I'm off to the wreckers. It 
It may look bad, but this is a huge step forward. Now I can do a couple of things that I wasn't able to do with it all together. So now I can do the oil feed to that turbo. I can do the rocket covers. I can modify them, paint them up because they looked absolutely crap. I can do the wiring, fix it all up, redo the fuel lines because they were in temporary anyway. And I want to move that wreck down anyway. I'm not happy with where it is. And just do a huge general cleanup. We've got the ignition cords that need to be custom made anyway, so that's why it needed to come apart. But why it's like this, let's do a bunch of stuff and get to the point where it's getting close to actually starting this up and moving it. Now, unfortunately, I need to go get parts, but it's past five o'clock. Shops are closed where I live. So that means I'm gonna to have to wait tomorrow anyway to get the new stuff. And that's when I'll probably pick it up. As long as I get it back tomorrow, that's when I'll pick it up and we will continue to put it all back together a lot better than it came apart.